Hello everyone, welcome to this quiz today on data science. So I requested you bear with us as we wait for a few minutes for other people to join. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself in the comment section while we wait. I'm just going to wait for a few more minutes for other people to join. Also, just as a FYI, uh, to take part in the quiz, it is highly recommended to use your mobile phone and visit the website www.menti.com and use the code 27831695. The code is visible on the screen. You can see it on the screen. You can also use a different tab on your laptop browser, for example, to take part in the quiz. But a live stream will be displaying the results as the quiz goes on. So it's highly recommended and beneficial to have both screens visible at the same time. That's why it's easier to take part in the quiz using the mobile phone. So once you open the link www.menti.com, use the code 27831695, which is shown on the screen and wait for the quiz to start and be ready to answer the questions. The quicker you answer, the more points you get. Okay. So think fast and click faster. Okay, so while we wait for other people to join, allow me to introduce our viewers to the world of data science. Okay, so what is data science? Data science is the field of study that deals with modern scientific knowledge, statistical methods and algorithms to derive insights from vast volume of data. A myriad of companies use data science, generating data every single minute. There is a need to make sense of this data and use it for our own benefit in the long run. Even when it comes to companies that use data science, New Sigma, Practical Fidelity, Intel, Amazon, and many other companies connect the dots and use data science in their ventures. Just about every business out there directly or indirectly uses data science to help cover their business and help them grow and compete in the business world. When it comes to the need for data science, we use the data science models to find unseen patterns within the data. We can use it to analyze, and draw insights from our data while solving business problems and making crisp decisions. There is a particular life cycle attached to the data science. The data science is the life cycle where we start with our data discovery, then we go through data preparation, exploratory data analysis, data modeling, interpret the results and back to data discovery. We will not go into too much details right now since this is just an introduction for people who are unaware of data science. What we will go through is the data science applications. So when it comes to applications, the first one is internet search. This is something that we all use every day. It's it, the search engines like Google and Bing. They all use data science to deliver accurate results based on search parameters, which are provided by the users. Secondly, voice assistance. Voice assistance analyzes the voice coming in and connecting with whatever patterns they need to activate. You can ask it to turn your lights on in the living room, control music, switch on or off vehicles, etc. The possibilities are endless. However, the biggest field growing right now in the data science field is healthcare. We analyze health data from a smartwatch spread across the world, ways to counter these diseases and monitor daily exercise results, among other things. We identify cancer versus non-cancer, so we know who to prioritize and get them in for surgery, but other people might not need the immediate care and even identify problems somebody might have with their health long before they even happen. It's a very neat thing to do, which is instead of waiting until you have a heart attack, to know months ahead of time that you will develop heart conditions. The next would be logistics. Logistics is basically how one goes from point A to point B. If you ever look at some of the major distributors, they pre-ship things based on what they guess people are going to need. This way you get your stuff right in the mailbox the day after you order it. Similarly, e-commerce is huge in data science because you have to know what kind of marketing we're going to put out, who we are selling to, what's our target audience, etc. Finally, we also have robotics. Robotics is one of the more fun ones when you're coming into the future. 
but it's all the more essential in automating the different tasks that we have. Self-driving cars to manufacturing lines to maybe even a self-robotic chef in the kitchen. Data science has its fingers all over the place when it comes to the future of robotics. That's all we need to know about data science from a layman's perspective right now. And we can start ahead with the quiz. So just a reminder, to take part in the quiz, please visit the website www.menti.com and use the code 27831695, which is shown at top of the screen right now. Like I mentioned before, do try to visit this using your mobile phone so you can take care of the results which are being shown on the stream. This will help you stay in touch with the standings since the top three winners will be receiving Amazon vouchers from Simply Learn. Faster answers equal higher points. So fire away as soon as you have a hunch. Let's just wait for a minute or two to get more people to join since they have to visit the URL and use the code. Then we can start the quiz. Okay, see around 25 people have joined. We'll be needing a few more. You can use this time to introduce yourself in the comments. Let us know what you do if you're a student, if you're a working professional. Have a chat in the comments. I'm pretty sure people are more than willing to communicate with you. Okay, I think we have enough people. Okay, seems we have enough people to take part in the quiz. So let's get started with our first question. Here comes question number one. What is the function in Python to compute the summary statistics for each numerical column in a data frame? Is it option A, head? Is it option B, summary? Is it option C, describe? Or option D, stats? The function in Python to compute the summary statistics for each numerical column in a data frame. Once again, guys, answers provided in the YouTube comments will not be considered. So please visit the URL and input the code to take part. The top three winners will be receiving Amazon vouchers. Just a reminder. Okay, so we see majority, okay, 11 people were able to answer correctly, which is the describe function. So the Python's describe function is to display summary statistics such as mean, standard deviation, minimum and maximum values, percentiles, etc. For each numerical column in a data frame, it can provide separate values. For example, if the data frame is df, then you can write df.describe to print out the summary statistics. Pretty simple explanation. Similarly, we have a lot of people answer the question correctly. So we have the first. 10 people who have made the way in the leaderboard. Remember guys, these are the people who answer the quickest. So if you get a hunch, just answer. Okay. The faster you answer, the more points you get. Moving on to question number two. When the magnitude of one variable decreases with an increase in another variable, what kind of correlation do they have? Is it A, perfect correlation? Is it B, no correlation? Is it C, positive correlation? Or D, negative correlation? The magnitude of one value is decreasing while the other is increasing and vice versa. What kind of correlation do they possess? 10 more seconds to give your answers. Okay, I think majority of the people have given already 25 people. Let's see how many were able to get it correct. Okay, more than half. Uh, yeah, so the correct answer is negative correlation. So in statistics and data science, a negative correlation is a relationship between two variables in which one variable increases as the other decreases and vice versa. For example, if the speed of the car increases, the time taken to reach the destination will decrease. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so we can see the people who answered quickly. Okay, we have Karan still at the top, Sandhya at second, Prachi at third. We have a long way to go. So answer quickly and you'll be one of the top three winners. 
Moving on to question number three. One dimensional array defined in pandas that can be used to store any data type is called dash. Is it a series? Is it a dictionary? Is it an ND array or a list? One dimensional array defined in pandas that can be used to store any data type. You can see the code on top of the screen to join. Few more seconds. Okay, almost majority got the answer correct, which is a series. The series is a one dimensional labeled array that can pull data for any data type, basically integer, string, flat, boolean, everything. The axis labels are called the indexes. So the correct answer here is option A, which is a series. I think we'll have a change in the leaderboard with Sandhya dropping down. Yes, dropping down to seven. Okay, so we have Jatin who has taken up third position and is en route to getting his Amazon voucher. Let's move on to question number four. Which of the following statements is correct about random forest algorithm? Is it A, random forests are difficult to interpret, but often very accurate? Is it B, they're easy to interpret, but often very accurate? Is it C, they're difficult to interpret and not even accurate? Or is it D, none of the above? Read the options carefully and make sure you choose the answer which is correct about the random forest algorithm. I have 10 more seconds. Okay, this is the question where a lot of people are taking time to answer. Good. Okay, majority will answer correctly, which is random forests are difficult to interpret, but they are very accurate. So they have multiple decision trees and merges them together to get a more accurate and a stable result. They're often difficult to interpret because of these multiple trees that we're fitting, but they can be very accurate for a long range of problems. Similar to last question, second and third position are not able to answer correctly, which will most likely push them down. And they did with Raghav and JC taking the second and third spot. Let's move on to question number five. Which of the following methods do we use to find the best fit line for data in linear regression? Is it A, maximum likelihood? Is it B, least square error? Is it C, logarithmic loss? Or D, both A and B? Which of the following methods do we use to find the best fit line for data in linear regression? Okay, time's up. Okay, the I think uh, less than 50% are able to give the correct answer, which is least square error. So the linear regression algorithm uses the sum of squared errors or residuals basically to get the best fit line for a model. Now least square is used because it is the smallest sum of squares of errors and it gives us the best fit line. Okay, third position JC was not able to answer which pushes him to sixth position and we have new top three altogether. Okay, let's move on to question number six. The find S algorithm ignores which parameters? Is it option A, the positive parameters? Option B, the negative parameters? Does it ignores both positive and negative parameters? Or D, it takes everything into consideration and does not ignore anything straight away. The find S algorithm ignores which parameters? Three more seconds for you to answer. Time is up. 24 people have answered this. Yeah, 14 people answered the right answer, which is negative. The finest algorithm starts from the most specific hypothesis and generalizes it by considering only positive examples. It ignores negative. 
examples. As long as the hypothesis space contains a hypothesis that describes the true target concept and the training data contains no errors, ignoring negative examples does not cause any problem to the accuracy of the model. Okay, majority were able to answer in the top 10 except GC, which is only going to push him down further, but Sandhya being the fastest one to answer this question. Okay, let's move on to question number 7. Which of the following statements is false? Is it A, subsetting can be used to select and exclude variables and observations? Is it B, raw data should be processed multiple times? Is the C merging concerns combining data sets to produce results? Or is it D? None of the above. We read the options very carefully, considering it's just a true or false. Ten more seconds. For those who haven't joined the quiz yet but are on the YouTube stream, follow the URL and the code mentioned on top of the screen to take part in the quiz. The top three winners are going to receive Amazon vouchers from Simply Learn. So let's start off. Okay, the correct answer is option B, which is raw data should be processed multiple times. Technically, it should not considering it is the false statement. The raw data may only need to be processed once. Data processing starts with data in its raw form and converts it into a more readable format. This can be graphs, documents, sheets, etc giving it the form and context necessary to be interpreted by computers and utilized by employees throughout an organization. You see around four people not able to answer in the top 10. I highly recommend people who are not a part of the top 10 right now to answer quickly and get into the leaderboard because a lot of the questions are being missed by the people who already are a part of the leaderboard. Okay. Let's move on to question number eight, which is what does the K stand for in the K-mean algorithm? Is it option A, number of clusters? Is it B, number of data? Is it C, the number of trees? Or D, number of iterations? What does the K stand for in the K-mean algorithm? 15 more seconds. Five more seconds to give your answer. Okay, so the correct answer is pretty, uh, the correct answer is obviously number of clusters, but a cluster refers to a collection of data points aggregated together because of certain similarities. You define a target number K, which refers to the number of centroids you need in the data set. A centroid in the imaginary or real location representing the center of the cluster. This way, every data point is allocated to each of the clusters by reducing the in-cluster sum of squares. Everyone was able to answer the question correctly, but Karan has taken Raghav's first position just because he was able to answer quickly. See, speed is helpful. Let's move on to question number nine and let's see people make use of that speed while answering. The question number nine is which one of the following statements is true for a decision tree? Is it option A, decision trees are only suitable for the classification problem statement? Is it B that the entropy of a node decreases as we go down the decision tree? Is it C entropy determines purity? Or D decision tree can only be used for numeric value and continuous attributes. Once again, this, the question is which of the following statements is true for a decision tree? Read the options carefully. Two more seconds and we are up. Okay, 11 people answered correctly. A lot of people answered the first option. No, second option. Entropy of a node decreases as we go down the decision tree. So the entropy is an information theory metric that measures the impurity or uncertainty in a group of observations, which directly eliminates the third option, which is entropy determines purity. It's supposed to determine impurity. It determines how a decision tree chooses to split data and helps determine the impurity of a node as we go down the decision tree. Entropy decreases. So we've done it nine questions so far. Let's see the leaderboard. It's pretty 50-50 right now in the top 10 with 
few people have a question where it's a jumble between the top three with Raghav and Karan exchanging blows for the top position. Okay, let's move on to question number 10. How do you choose the right node while constructing a decision tree? Is it, is it option A, which is an attribute having high entropy? Is it B, an attribute having high entropy and information gain? Is it C, an attribute having the lowest information gain? Or D, an attribute having the highest information gain? Period. A lot of people answer this very quickly before 10 seconds came up on the counter. Should be fairly easy. I'm hoping a lot of people answer this correctly then, considering the speed with which we received answers for this question. Or are we in for a shock? Let's see. It's pretty split between option B and D. So the correct option B, an attribute having the highest information gain. So we can de define information gain as a measure of how much information a feature provides about a class. Information gain helps to determine the order of attributes in the nodes of a decision tree. The main node is referred to as the parent node, whereas the sub nodes are known as the child nodes. We can use information gain to determine how good the splitting of nodes in a decision tree is and can help us determine the quality of splitting. The way people answered, I was thinking, okay, this is probably the first time seeing where the top five answered correctly, but not the bottom five, which only widens the gap between both halves of the top 10 leaderboard. Just a quick reminder, the top three scorers at the end of the quiz, do not close your laptop or close your phones or anything, just take a screenshot and send it to YouTube contest at simplylearn.net to receive your Amazon voucher. This is just something for our own verification that not anybody is sending the entries. Okay, so take a picture or a screenshot and send it to YouTube contest at simplylearn.net to receive your Amazon vouchers. This is for the top three scorers at the end of the quiz. For now, let's move on to question number 11. So what distance metrics are suitable for categorical variables to find the closest neighbors? Is it option A, Euclidean distance? Is it B, Manhattan distance? Is it C, Minkowski distance? Or D, Hamming distance? I'm fairly certain people who are unaware of data science are really scratching their heads as to what is going on. 15 more seconds. Is it Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance, Minkowski distance, or Hamming distance? Five more seconds. I think a couple of people missed answering the question this time. Okay, majority answered Euclidean, which is not correct. Answer is Hamming distance, which is a metric for comparing two binary data strings. While comparing two binary strings of equal length, Hamming distance is the number of bit positions in which the two bits are different. The Hamming distance in two strings A and B is denoted by B vector of A and B. In order to calculate the Hamming distance between the two strings, we perform the XOR operation and then count the total number of ones in the resultant string. Around six people were able to answer correctly. This will probably push current down to fifth position with Anmol being the fastest one to answer this round of question. Okay, let's move on to question number 12 as we are almost halfway with our question 10. What does the term CLI stand for? Is it option A, command line interface? Is it B, command, uh, command language interface? Or C, command line intercom? It should be fairly easy, I'm guessing. What does the term CLI stand for? Command line interface, command language interface, or command line intercom? 15 more seconds. I think a lot of people are answering very quickly. Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty expected, right? 22 people answered the correct question, which is command line interface. So the CLI or command line interface, the text-based user interface used to run programs, manage computer files, interact with another computer, etc. The command line interfaces are also called command line user interfaces, console user interfaces, and character user interfaces. That's one of the reasons why I did not put those options. In, in the question. Okay, so majority will answer correctly except Sandhya, which might push her down the leaderboard. Okay, I did not. 
Okay, great. So our top 10 is intact. Let's move on to question number 13. Inference engines work on the principle of is it A, forward chaining? Is it B, backward chaining? Is it C, both A and B, which is both forward chaining and backward chaining? Or option D, none of the above. What principle do inference engines work on? Okay, the correct option is backward chaining. So the forward chaining is known as forward deduction or forward reasoning method when using an inference engine. The forward chain is a form of reasoning which starts with atomic sentences in the knowledge base and applies interference rules in the forward direction. Backward chaining is known as backward deduction or backward reasoning when using an inference engine. A backward chaining algorithm is a form of reasoning which starts with the goal and works backward accordingly. So, 8, 9, and 10 were able to answer correctly, but our top 10 still remains unchanged. We're going to move on to question number 14. Which algorithm of the following uses the least memory? Is it A, depth first search? Is it B, breadth first search? Is it C, both option A and B use the same memory? Or is D, there cannot be any comparison between depth first and breadth first search when comparing the memory allocation? Which of these algorithms uses the least memory? Five more seconds and everyone has voted with the correct answer being the majority's choice which is depth first search. DFS uses a lesser amount of memory because at a time the path from the node to a root is only stored in the memory stack unlike breadth first search or DFS which stores the whole tree in it. Yeah, except Thomas everyone were able to answer. Oh, first top three has been consistent for a while now. Let's see if there is any change for the following few questions. Question number 15. Which of the following is false about correlation and covariance? Is it option A, a zero correlation does not necessarily imply impedance between variables? Option B is correlation and covariance values are the same. Option C, the covariance and correlation are always the same sign or D, correlation is the standardized version of covariance. Once again reminding, the question is which of the following is false about correlation and covariance. We're almost done. Time is up and very few people answer the correct one. They're not the same. Correlation covariance values are the same is completely false. The covariance is a statistical term that refers to a systematic relationship between two random variables in which a change in the other reflects a change in one variable. Its value can range from like minus infinity to plus infinity with a negative value indicating a negative relationship and a positive value indicating a positive relationship. In statistics, correlation is a measure that determines the degree to which two or more random variables move in sequence. When an equivalent movement of another variable reciprocates the movement of one, in some way or the other, the variables are said to be correlated, which basically means both of them are not the same. That's why the correct option is option number B. Once again, just three people in the top 10 were able to answer correctly. Let's see if we can move up. Ravi has moved up to the sixth position now. Let's see how far he goes. Moving on to question number 16. Which of the following algorithms in machine learning is called a lazy learner? Is it option A, which is K means clustering? Is it option B, which is K nearest neighbors? Is it C, naive bias? Or D, decision trees? Which of the following algorithms in machine learning is called a lazy learning algorithm? It's a complete concept, it's a complete different learning method, which is the lazy learning method. Which of the following algorithms embodies that? 10 more seconds to give your answer.
Okay, so time is up. Pretty expected. K nearest neighbors is the correct answer. The majority of the people were able to answer correctly. For those unaware, in machine learning, lazy learning is a learning method in which the generalization of the training data is delayed until a query is made to the system as opposed to eager learning where the system tries to generalize the training data even before they start receiving queries. The best example of this is KNN or K nearest neighbors. It basically stores all of the points then uses the data when you make a query to it. I think people were not able to answer very quickly this time. Hence the low scores with Ashros moving up top and current being the fastest for this question. Oh, moving on to question number 17. Which of the following is true about residuals? Is it option A, the higher the better? Is it option B, the lower the better? Or is it option C, it depends really on the situation whether the higher residual is better for the model or a lower residual is better. It's inconclusive and irrelevant. Basically. So which is true about residuals? Is it better if it's higher or is it better if it's low? Five more seconds. Okay, majority answered correctly, which is option B. The lower the residual is better. See, residuals is a, in a statistical or machine learning model, the differences between observed and predicted values of data. They're a diagnostic measure used when accessing the quality of a model. They're also known as errors. So by extension, the lower the residual, the lower the error, and more accurate the predictions in your regression system are. So the lower the residuals means highly accurate model. We might see a shuffle this time considering four of the top five were not able to answer correctly. Again, okay, no, the gap is too big, although Ravi is making his way up top. While I implore others to take these last few sets of questions seriously because we are running towards the end and this is the 18th question, which is which of the following is a widely used and effective machine learning algorithm based on the idea of bagging. option A, decision tree, is it option D, support vector machine, is it option C, which is regression, or option D, random forest. Which one of these is based on the idea of bagging and everyone voted very quickly this time. Okay, we didn't, we have to wait for the counter. Okay, now 13 people answered the correct question, which is random forest. See, it builds an ensemble of decision trees, mostly with the bagging method. It's also known as bootstrap aggregation. It's an ensemble learning method that is commonly used to reduce variance within a noisy data set. Pretty untouched leaderboard except one position. So we're going to move on to question number 19. Which of the following machine learning techniques helps in detecting the outliers in data? Is it option A, anomaly detection? Option B, clustering? Option C, classification, or option D, none of the above. Which of the techniques help in detecting the outliers in data? You know, voting very quickly for the past last few questions. Okay, the option, correct option is A, anomaly detection, which is any process that finds the outliers of a data set, basically which are the items that do not belong in the data set. Okay, these anomalies might point to unusual network traffic, uncover a sensor on the fritz, or simply identify data for cleaning before the analysis starts. I think we're not going to see a lot of change in the leaderboard now. And we are not. Teams Raghav, Jatin, and Prachi on their way to receive the vouchers for being one of our top three winners. There's still time to change with question number 20, which is which of the following statement is true about the base classifier? option A, base classifier works on the base theorem of probability. Is it B, base classifier is an unsupervised learning algorithm? Is it C, that the classifier is also known as the maximum a priori classifier or D, it assumes the independence between independent variables? Quite a handful. Which of the following is true about the base classifier?
this is the question where not everyone was able to answer quickly and we could have jumped the time up. So time's up and least number of people gave the correct answer, which is option D. The Bayes classifier is an unsupervised learning algorithm. The Bayes uh, classifier internally uses the concept of Bayes theorem to the position for unseen data points. It describes the probability of occurrence of an event related to any condition. It is also considered for the case of conditional probability. Okay, no one in the top 10 is able to answer that question correctly. So we are going to move on to question number 21. Inappropriate selection of learning rate value in gradient descent gives rise to what? Is it A, local minima? Is it B, oscillations? Is it C, slow convergence? Or D, all of the above? Inappropriate selection of learning rate value in gradient descent gives rise to which phenomenon? Ten more seconds. One and our time is up. Yeah, correct. Uh, all of these phenomena can be seen. See, the learning rate decides how fast or slow our optimizer is able to achieve the global minimum. So, by choosing an inappropriate value of learning rate, we may not reach the global minimum, but instead be stuck at a local minimum, oscillate around the minimum and become the cause of which convergence time increases. So the correct option is D, all of the above. Majority were able to answer correctly, so I'm not assuming a lot of change in the board, but there, let's see. No, it seems Thomas only moved up to position number five. Still, the top three are still untouched. Let's move on to the next question, which is, which of the following statements is false about ridge and lasso regression? Is it option C that these are the types of regularization methods to solve the overfitting problem? Is it option B which says lasso regression is a type of regularization method? Is it C ridge regression shrinks the coefficient to a lower value? Or D it lowers some coefficients to a zero value? Once again, which of the following statements is false about the ridge and lasso regression? 20 more seconds to give your answers. Just a reminder, the people who are in the top three positions, please send a screenshot or a picture of your position on the quiz after the quiz ends, where it clearly states you are in the first place, second place, or third place, etc. And send us the screenshot to YouTube contest at simplylearn.net to receive your Amazon voucher. Meanwhile, nine people answer the question correctly, which is option D. Ridge regression never drops any feature. Instead, it shrinks the coefficients. However, lasso regression drops some features by making the coefficient of that feature zero. Therefore, the latter is used as a feature selection technique. Okay, there might be a shuffle in places right now. No, still though. The gap between Raghav and the rest of the crew is seems to be too big to breach right now. But the final three questions are here, which is 23. Which of the following is a revision control system? Is it option A, Psi? Is it option B, which is Git? Or option C, NumPy? Expected a lot more answers by this time, to be honest. Which of the following is a revision control system? Psi? Git or NumPy. Five more seconds. And 16 people answered correctly, which is Git. The Git is a software for tracking changes in any set of files usually used for coordinating work among programmers collaboratively developing source code. This happens during software development process cycle. Its goals include speed, data integrity, and support for distributed non-linear workflows, which makes the job of software developers that more helpful. Everyone answered the question except Karan in the top 10, Prachi being the fastest. 
with once again more change in the lead about final two questions this is your time to shine for people in the top five so how do we perform Bayesian classification when some features are missing so option a we integrate the posterior's probabilities over the missing features is it option b we ignore the missing features is it c we assume the missing values as the mean of all values or option d we drop the features completely 20 more seconds to give the answer how do we perform Bayesian classification when some of the features are missing A handful of people have not answered this one actually it's weird but the ones who did majority of them got it right which is option a we integrate the posterior probabilities and some features are missing while performing basic classification we don't use general methods of handling missing values we integrate the posterior probabilities for better predictions so option a is correct in this case Okay, there has been a bit of distinction comes to the time taken to answer still the same three people at the top let's see if something happens in the final question question number 25 which of the following step is performed by the data scientist after acquiring the data is it a data replication is it b data cleansing is it c data integration or D all of the mention which of the following step is performed by the data scientist immediately after acquiring the data replication cleansing integration or all of the above you have 10 more seconds to answer the final question of today's quiz time is up the correct answer being data cleansing so data cleansing or data cleaning, data scrubbing is the process of detecting and correcting corrupt or inaccurate records from a database, table or record set and is generally performed by data scientists after acquiring the data immediately. Which is the final question of this quiz. Let's see if there is any change. No, it seems the top three positions are consistent with Raghav getting the first position and Jatin and Prachi getting the second and third position in this quiz respectively. Congratulations to all three of you. Please send a screenshot of your screen or a picture to YouTube contest at simplylearn.net to get your Amazon vouchers. We thank everyone else for taking part in this quiz and for the people who have not taken part in the quiz but have been following the results on the YouTube stream. We will keep having these quizzes with different topics and different technologies. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and follow our community post to be alerted a day before these quizzes are held. So you are not late and get your chance to win an Amazon voucher. Thank you so much for taking part today, for spending your time. Stay safe.